Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, today we'll have a discussion on how the discussion, the talks between uh, President uh, Obama and uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will impact the future of Indo-US relations, especially in the economic sphere. To talk about it, I have with me in our studio Mr. Vivek Lal, who is the CEO of an American company called General Atomics. Uh, and uh, General Atomics is at the cutting edge of uh, technology relating to defense, uh, nuclear power, uh, solar power, all three of which are uh, very important to India today. And uh, I also have with me uh, Mr. Arvind Virmani, former executive director at the International Monetary Fund uh, on behalf of uh, representing India. And uh, he will also give us uh, his perspective on where are Indo-US relations uh, headed uh, in the next, say, five to ten years. Uh, welcome to uh, our uh, show, uh, Dr. Vivek Lal. I'll begin with you. Now, you are here as part of the delegation which is uh, accompanying Obama and you represent a company uh, which is at uh, the cutting edge of technology and uh, high expectations have been generated uh, in regard to uh, what some say a technology glasnost which uh, the United States uh, is looking at vis-a-vis uh, -vis India, uh, opening up uh, things which were, could not have been conceived uh, until five, seven years ago. Uh, so, how do you see uh, this relationship uh, developing uh, going forward? I think you're absolutely right. I think in the last uh, several years, there has been a tremendous convergence of uh, interests uh, between the largest and the, lar uh, the most uh, popular democracies. Um, and I think one of the reasons is that there are inherent strengths in both nations in terms of innovation, in terms of technology, in terms of the resources and uh, manpower required. And so I think it is almost a natural realization of both powers that technology sharing and not necessarily one way but in a two-way uh, format mm -hmm. will be the way to innovate and innovation is the key to uh, a better economy, better future for both countries. Okay. So you uh, you really now believe that uh, that India-US relations uh, are being taken to a qualitatively higher plane uh, uh, after these talks? Sir? I do believe so. I think uh, we see a tremendous uh, reinvigoration in the corporate sector in the US in terms of the possibilities of uh, collaboration with India mm -hmm. and that is largely due to the, the new policy frameworks that are being put in place and I think these government to government talks uh, are being watched closely for, from a corporate standpoint to see how will this then provide an enabling environment for uh, corporates to uh, pursue interests in uh, R&D and innovation. Dr. Arvind Virmani, you have been associated with uh, policy making in India at various levels uh, as chief economic advisor in the Ministry of Finance, later as member planning commission. Uh, you've also worked on uh, trade interaction with uh, between India and uh, US and some of the bigger trading partners. Uh, how do you see uh, some of the uh, ticklish uh, issues, uh, if I may say so, uh, their resolution uh, after uh, these initiatives uh, begin? So uh, leaving aside the defense technology and the defense relationship, uh, the way I look at economics is in two parts. You know, one is that we are both market economies. So in some sense, if the government gets out of the thing and leaves things to the private sector, there is a huge potential. Uh, of course, we will be, our government is getting out because it wants to promote development, economic growth, job creation. And we are doing it because uh, uh, that will be good for the country, for our own business. But it will have a tremendous uh, opportunity and, uh, and advantage or, or, or benefit uh, to U.S. business. So in some sense, I am actually against even the U.S. government or the Indian government getting too much into F things which should be left to the business. Uh, that's just one thing. But, in uh, but the second part, yeah, yeah. but the second part of it is that, the, uh, of course, there are multilateral uh, issues which come up, which we always discuss, climate change, uh, uh, technology, India's uh, IPR, whatever, yeah. right? 
so uh, there unfortunately you know there is one thing to uh, try to uh, collaborate and move forward in a multilateral context but unfortunately in a bilateral context the politics gets too much into it yeah. so even there actually i favor that these things be done quietly that the governments don't come up and make it into issues so they should be resolved i feel they would be resolved much easier if if the business doesn't lobby with the their uh, legislatures and with their governments to get the governments into an issue which yeah. i think is best left to be sorted out in business okay so uh, so if, if if those uh, understanding can be reached i think it, it has great potential well business not lobbying uh, may seem yeah. a bit utopian <laughs> because, because a lot of policy making happens as right. a result of business is lobbying uh, dr lal how do you uh, see breakthroughs uh, in the context of climate change uh, imperatives uh, india is under pressure like other de developing uh, economies to to be little more proactive uh, than before uh, to commit to s mitigation of uh, of carbon emissions etc going forward do you think a bilateral deal of the kind us did with china does would that work for india a, a bilateral deal where the us commits to exporting cheaper technology even financing which otherwise they talk about in the in the multilateral fora but they don't do it right. uh, do you think uh, a bilateral deal on climate change which then results in uh, solar power uh, various other forms of green energy trading which is big on the agenda do you see that as a possibility yes i do think that is a stepping stone in the right direction i do feel uh, for example you mentioned solar the solar initiative in india is very laudable i think uh, uh, there are several technologies in incubation that could lead to very significant strides in that area and uh, furthermore uh, the impact to the economy because i do believe uh the, the the solar if there is a revolution of sorts uh with the latest technologies and bringing the price point down uh that would lead to a tremendous number of jobs being created and you've been saying uh, in my last interview you said india could have 50% of its energy basket uh, as non fossil fuel right that's right that's right and i and i don't feel 15 20 years from now exactly and so i think this is a tremendous potential and a tremendous potential for job growth even in india Dr. Vimani, what do you think of a bilateral deal with with the US uh, around uh, climate change? See, see, the way it works is, I think you know they are going to be uh, multilateral negotiations. Mm -hmm. What is important bilaterally is not to have a deal which covers two countries, but to have a, a road map of how they will act in in those multilateral things, because that's the ultimate uh, goal of of these kind of things. Climate change is not a bilateral issue. it's a multilateral issue so the deal really is involved that not that you will do this or that it's to have a joint approach which will say okay we will fight in a multilateral context but there'll be a bottom line and this is how we will resolve it to agree on a kind of road map uh, to that resolution is is what is important in but let me explain dr what, what yeah. i'm getting at right now us uh, and europe they have committed at the multilateral for a climate change or to to fund uh, developing countries which are willing to right. uh, take cuts right emission cuts and uh, also to supply technology right. at a cheap uh, right. now if the us does not do that multilaterally yeah. and if they commit to india bilaterally a certain uh, funding a certain you know uh, a certain a level culture, in, uh, certain engagement yeah. and level concessions right. they offer to india on technology and financing right should india go for it or should india wait for multilateral uh, no uh, fora to resolve issues no that's not yeah okay that that's a very good point uh, uh, in fact that's the whole point about partnership right so if you can have uh, some uh, and it's you know it's it's rude to talk about it but that's the history of negotiation they always side deals like in the w don't talk about it like in the w okay? yeah. so if you can have a side deal of this sort which uh, in in this case clears the way for india to do certain things which are also in the interests of the us that's good that's definitely uh, i i would be all for it because most countries you know talk big about uh, only caring for the world but uh, when it comes down to the crunch it's all uh, about your own country right so uh, if it's necessary to get that global deal yes i i think it's a good thing okay. dr lal uh, 
defense is a is a big piece uh, which will follow uh, from these talks in fact if anything there is a full consensus among all parties concerned including the sang parivar right. uh, which uh, which which endorses uh, import of defense technology cutting edge technology into india to enhance our national security vis-a-vis -vis china pakistan etc right now uh, do you think that this is one piece which will move the fastest since you had a company uh, which is the cutting edge of defense technology and right. you were also bringing the drone technology we are told into india so do you think that uh, this piece will uh, happen sooner than the other more contentious pieces yeah i think uh, defense provides uh, uh, i guess a, a path of uh, uh, gelling various issues together quickly um clearly in defense there are sensitive technologies that would require uh, government clearances um to be able to do the required technical exchanges and if the governments come together on certain projects or certain um, technical challenges and do agree to collaborate uh, then the corporates can come in and do so and i believe that uh, to really have leapfrog technologies and technologies that get india to the next level um this is one of the areas that can expedite uh, not only uh, collaboration but trust because at the end of the day it is a, a question of trust and, and the defense bureaucracy on both sides since this is a lot of government uh, uh, inputs come into uh, defense exchanges right? right so are you hopeful that uh, that india will uh, flatten its uh, defense bureaucracy uh, and and america will also remove export controls in in some of the uh, Uh, technologies that it is uh, very protective about uh, right. and and offers it only to very strategic allies right and i, I think as the process of building trust and the relationship continues with this visit being a, again a very significant milestone i think that will continue to converge i do believe that uh, the the export control reforms etc uh, are in the larger interest and i think the larger interest will prevail over both bureaucracies uh to to make the right things happen in both interests because um there has to be a mutual goal uh, uh stated and established and if if the mutual goal is of uh, benefit to both countries then it will be achieved it will be achieved dr vimani there is also talk of the two countries uh, starting to negotiate uh, a multilateral uh, investment uh, agreement now multilateral investment agreement would would require that first the two countries open up a number of sectors which are of interest to each other right so the us wants banking insurance multi brand retail etc fully uh, opened up because they they are more interested in services uh, uh, as compared to manufacturing so so how do you think this will pan out so you know it's actually the bit the bilateral investment treaty which is kind of uh, becoming difficult so you have to be very clear there is trade in goods and services which i don't think is that difficult now i i think there's a lot of movement and then there is trade in what we call factors you know capital technology and labor you know because skills those are actually the more contentious issues between india and okay. and the us yeah, we will take a small yeah. break here and then uh, uh, please don't go away keep watching rs tv trophy boat race of kerala popularly called vallam kali in local parlance this historic boat race dates back to 1952 when pandit nehru visited the state and a pageantry of boats accompanied him from kottayam to alappura the race conducted on the second saturday of august every year is a major tourist attraction It's generally the snake boats which participate in the race and hence the shape of the winner's trophy is also a replica of a snake boat. Madurai Subalakshmi 
कर्नाटक शैली की मशहूर संगीतकार संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघ सभा में संगीत प्रस्तुति देने वाली पहली भारतीय भारत रत्न से सम्मानित पहली महिला संगीतज्ञ रेमन मैगसे से अवार्ड पाने वाली पहली भारतीय महिला इसके अलावा वो पहली महिला रही जिन्हें संगीत कला निधि के रूप में मिला कर्नाटक संगीत का सर्वोत्तम पुरस्कार महात्मा गांधी पंडित नेहरू और लता मंगेशकर को किया जाता है इनके प्रशंसकों में शुमार वेलकम बैक टू स्टेट ऑफ द इकोनॉमी डॉक्टर विरमणी वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट मल्टीलैटरल इन्वेस्टमेंट एग्रीमेंट हाउ एंड इन व्हाट मैनर कुड इट रियली सर्व pan out yeah. uh, you saying something uh, yeah so uh, i said that the issue under on the table so to say is the bilateral investment treaty yeah. and so it's important to understand there's a difference between uh, trade in goods and services yeah. and that in what we call factors in economics that is capital yeah. or investment uh, technology and, and labor movements you know yeah. skill movements yeah. so that becomes a lot more complicated and because the old regimes for the last 50 years from the first world war on just focused on goods and then later on services trade this is a little more complicated so the issue here uh, because it gets tied with uh, domestic laws you know we have a very uh, very uh, you know how the supreme court in india acts etc so there are certain uh, legal uh, issues which come up in this Uh, there are also uh, i guess the us uh, bilateral treaties have more of uh, technology and and uh, uh, those kind of things in the investment yeah. and so on ipr ipr so we have different approaches you yeah. know fundamentally because when we talk about investment or have for the last 20 years we think of investment as investment mm-hmm. but the us thinks of oh, the other things technology as part of that the whole so there package, is a little yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, you know so the the ipr issues are a little more complicated yeah. than as i said the legal issues now as you know i mean many of us complain that the courts get into all kinds of policy and other issues which they shouldn't mm-hmm. but the point is the government has to listen yeah. so there are these legal kind of complications fact, mr kerry had raised this issue in regard to yeah. uh, you know investment in solar power he said that india has some rules which uh, uh, give preference to local suppliers ah, of that is a different issue now yeah, yeah. I, i mean that's also ha- it yeah. has it so it uh, would so figure in local the, content and other requirements as to my best of my knowledge we are now uh, completely trips compliant and if there is some problem with that that can be sorted out yeah. but i don't think there is any policy of the government of india uh, on formal policy that i am aware of which really should create that much of a problem yeah. so maybe it's just a matter of clarifying to make sure okay. there's no problem etc Dr. Lal, how? What is your uh, take on uh, intellectual property rights? This is this is something that the that American government, American corporates, are constantly harping on, and it's it's top of the mind for them. Uh, and as Dr. Virmani said, it will definitely figure in the multilateral investment. Any agreement on multilateral investment, I think IPR will be embedded in that. Uh, right. and, and and the. as he said as dr vimal said us looks at everything much broader uh, kind of canvas right now uh, how do you see this getting resolved because uh, they want our indian patents act uh, to be modified to be changed uh, because our patent law allows for compulsory licensing licensing of drugs patented drugs uh, uh, in the event of epidemic so in the event that poor people need to be supplied those drugs at right. cheaper rate now, these are all uh, uh, very tricky uh, issues and Uh, thorn in the flesh so right. so how are these uh, issues going to be resolved so i i completely agree with you these are rather complex issues and ipr of course uh if i can talk from a corporate perspective is is kind of uh, your your treasure right and that is what you uh you have invested in and you have created and uh, that is the engine of growth for your company and so obviously that is Uh, something every company looks to protect and wants to make sure even as they globalize that uh, certain aspects are protected because of the sheer investments that have gone in and and that defines the dna of the company and so cl- clearly um, as one does business globally one wants to protect that and see that those safeguards are in place um having said that i think uh, us and india there is a common again uh, a common goal of uh, 
not only one way. I mean, we of, often think of it just being U.S. to India, but there is there are clearly um, property, intellectual property rights, or intellectual property here that needs to be protected in India. And so I think because of uh, a two-way kind of uh, thought process, um, I think the mechanisms will will shape up. And I think in the last few years there has been significant progress in this area. Okay. Uh, do you think uh, for this? The two sides will have to uh, probably talk much more openly and uh, uh, as, as we initially yeah. said, there has to be a, 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 a glass nost kind of spirit Correct. Uh, Correct. Uh, to, 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 to change things or… Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. The uh, candid conversation on these, putting all the facts on the table and, and what are the pain points. Uh, and I think getting both not only the governments but also businesses involved to see what is it that they, what, what are the parameters they would like to see uh, is the right way to come up with a solution because this cannot be done in a vacuum. And do you get the sense that the US government is now uh, committed enough to this, uh, to take this engagement to a much higher uh, qualitative level and they are willing to wait for our political economy to, to adjust because as Dr. Virmani said, our political economy has its own uh, way of working, uh, uh, our institutions have their own way of, way of working, their legal frameworks, so changing all that uh, will take time, so do you yes. think that the, uh, uh, the, the no, I think patience is a virtue and I think both both economies because they see this natural convergence will will have to uh, allow each of the processes in their respective countries to uh, allow the, allow it to work itself through and these do take time and uh, these are again in the larger scheme of things uh, you know a few a few years in in in, in hundreds of years is, is still a very short instance yeah. dr so, Ramani, yeah. how do you look at so this? let me comment yeah. on since, this since because you, you, I, you had raised this yeah issue. because i i actually uh, said this to one of the secretaries who came from the state uh, state department on on this issue I said the, the big change in India is that this new government is not ideological. So if we are discussing and disputing whatever IPR issue, it is not an ideological issue. It is a practical, pragmatic uh, way of looking at it. Gotcha. And that and what friendship or partnership means is you understand my position, okay. uh, which is not ideological, which has genuine uh, okay. problems or issues or uh, interests. You know, yeah. we interests do not always uh, are the same. Sure. So partners have to understand. I have to understand your uh, perspective. You have to understand mine. And then it means resolving it in a fair and balanced way somewhere in between so to say sure right so, so this would also so, mean yeah. dr virmani it would also mean that the u.s government should have the conviction to tell the pharma yeah. lobby for instance that's right you that that you please, can't have your ultimate position too much pressure and Absolutely. you can't have it Absolutely. your way on everything exactly so so it's uh, some sort of adjustment of that kind right. uh, could right. also happen that's right yeah. I, I think uh, I, agree, I agree with Dr. Verma. I mean, it has to be a compromise, and uh, ultimately, when partners work work together, they, there cannot be um, uh, lines in the sand drawn. You have to converge, and yeah. uh, because it's in the common good. Okay. And uh, and in regard to uh, uh, defense, particularly, uh, do you see any major IPR issues there, or uh, since it's a uh, lot of it is happening at government to government? Uh, so it's more easily uh, resolved than when it is private sector to private sector? Yeah, as, as the uh, technologies and the more sensitive technologies are shared, uh, again I do see, um, again IPR issues will always be there. Yeah. And uh, But having said that, uh, until one gets a government clearance to in fact share, it does not happen. And yeah, so sure, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Like earlier, the US uh, would put export control over a whole lot of defense technology but right. now they're easing it they're easing so it, yeah. something has changed right correct, correct. so now what is it that has changed i think it's it's again the building in the of the relationship the, the confidence trust, level is it the confidence the trust uh, and uh, indeed a mutual interest that you know if you lay out the world map and look at the us uh, uh, and India and their common goals yeah. and the geopolitics, uh, I think so, it's yeah. a convergence. So, Dr. Virmani, so can, I, no, can yeah. I ask you a specific yeah. question? Now, as he says, the US is now open to really doing a lot uh, with India, right? Now, you, you are also running a think tank now uh, which looks at strategic affairs. 
Now, do you think India and US have reached a stage where they are willing to go issue by issue and US does not expect India to be an ally uh, uh, in, yeah. the, in the old uh, Cold War format? See, that is very clear. But you know, uh, technology is sensitive and the way I see it, and I will probably continue this conversation uh, with him, is, you know, there are some very high, you know, we have very selective uh, expertise in certain very high te uh, technology areas, but yeah. for a broad spectrum, we don't have it. You know, we should not have illusions. We don't have the so ecosystem. Is, yeah. We don't. Yeah, we don't have the economy. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful. You know, they they will not open up everything in high tech for us. But there's a level of middle technology which is just as good for the private sector. They have to develop expertise. For example, right now they can't even make planes. Mm -hmm. So having a plane which may be in the middle of the range is not such a bad idea for the private sector, right? As against, let's say, ISRO or, or, or the Atomic Energy Commission, which has to try and uh, be on the front line. So, so we have to be pragmatic. We, yeah. we shouldn't think that they'll open up everything. Yeah. On the other hand, they have to open up some things we need. Yeah. Otherwise, th there is no <laughs> gain really, yeah. you know, from that partnership. But secondly, you know, on that middle level, the real issue is of getting into the ecosystem, which we can do. As I said, we are market economy. Unlike our northern neighbor, who I won't mention, yeah. which has to kind of steal things, yeah. <laughs> there has to be this trust and a framework sure where the private sectors can work with each other and learn from each other. No, because if they stop all learning, then it's not much use for us. I mean, tell me, are we ready today to sign a, f a full-fledged free trade Super agreement on goods and services with the US? Since yeah. there, is, there are comparative advantages both can offer to each other. I'll tell you, uh, five years ago, I was a big advocate. I have a paper in EPW saying that in 2006. But I think uh, uh, given the politics it's not feasible not because of the goods and services but because i said uh, this mixing of the factor and goods and services okay, okay. in the us everything is together okay, okay? So they are part of each other in our case it is not we view them separately okay. and to bridge that political divide i don't think is feasible right now okay. maybe in five years or so perhaps what do you think dr lal do you think uh, there could be a, a much bigger overarching kind of uh, uh, agreement on goods, services, investment, technology, everything. Uh, uh, I would tend to agree with Dr. Vimani's. Uh, Can we be ambitious and start working on it? I, I do think so. Yeah. I do think so. I think we we need to set aggressive goals, mm -hmm. uh, but fully understanding what are the complexities of each of the systems and what are the you know pain points, etc. Uh, and but but unless we establish that goal, yeah. we're never going to get there. So at least we should first get the low-hanging fruits going. That's right. right. You will pluck low, right. then move on to the bigger things. Got it. Thank you very much for talking to us, uh, Dr. Vivek Lal and Dr. Arvind Virmani. Appreciate you uh, having with us. Thank uh, you. That's all we have in this edition of State of the Economy. We'll be back with you next week. Thanks for watching.